Everything that I'm going to show you here is extremely well documented. We walked through it uh, the whole way. I was even teaching a class three Saturdays this month and walked right through it. So uh, if you pay attention uh, going forward, you won't have to ask anybody what's going on anymore. You'll know. Okay, so very simply, when we look at any chart, the problem that people have is they try to read a chart as opposed to analyze data. There's a difference. So here's what I mean by that. When you have whatever chart it is, and right, be like, Rob, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you're, you know, brand new to this, that's fine. It's going to be very simple concepts. There's only three possible things that can happen on a chart going from one bar to the next, okay? The first thing that can happen is you weren't strong enough to take out the previous high or the previous low. That's called an inside bar. We call that a scenario one. There's only three things that can happen. Scenario one that's an equilibrium. You couldn't take it out either side. Scenario two is you take out one side of the previous bar. So here you can see this range. This bar takes out that side. We can define that as trending. That's a two. Two is something you're going to want to know about, right? You want to trade in the direction of the two. That's scenario two. The third scenario that can possibly happen is you take out both sides of the previous range. This is one of the most important things you can know. Right? This can make you a lot of money and, and or get you killed if you don't know about this. Right? So the thing about a three here, the scenario three, is it can't go three without going two first. That's impossible. Right? So when you see this, go down here, take this out, and come back in. Now it goes potential three. That's something you're going to want to know about because you can't change this. And what I mean by that, we say once a three, always a three can't not be. What that means is once you are outside of a previous range, there's nothing else you can do. It has to stay that way. Wherein a one could break and go two. A two can reverse and go back into be a three. Right? But a three, once a three, always a three can't not be. It also helps you gauge magnitude, which I'll get to in a second. Second concept that's very simple to understand is something called the time frame continuity principle. What that means is when people look at single time frame charts, they're doing uh, incomplete work, right? What's important to understand is that price doesn't move, it aggregates. So when you hear somebody saying the price is going up because there's more buyers and sellers, that's not true. You have to have a seller for every buyer, right? It tells you that they're more aggressive. All right, so by aggregate, I mean that for any tradable vehicle, there will be some a bid price and an ask price. All right, so what somebody's willing to pay for it and what, what somebody wants to get paid. Now, if the bar is green, this means that the sellers are getting their price. The more aggressive participants are the buyers. They're taking the offer, right? This must be occurring. There's no other explanation for that. So when we go by pr different time frames, we want to end... We want to evaluate and uh, understand the participants by price and time, right? We're going to divide them down. So a monthly group, a weekly group, daily group, all that kind of stuff. And as I'm going to show you, the macro group, here, you'll notice this month in CTXS, the more aggressive are the buyers. They're taking the offer. If you go to the weekly, last week, they were also here last week buying. On any given day that you have a green, those participants are here. You've got daily, weekly, and monthly participants. The more aggressive are buyers. They're taking the offer. And then anytime the 60 is green, like in here or in here and here, we call that full time frame continuity to the upside. One of the great things about this is you'll hear people say in the belief that algorithms, algorithmic trading is picking them off and that's why they're losing. That's not true. Algorithms are maybe 70 or more percent of trading now, and they're not evil robots. They're stupid. They tell you what they're doing, all right? So when you have full time frame continuity on the knowledge that 70 or more percent is being automatically executed, they have to tell a program three things. What do you want it to do? When do you want it to do it? And how do you want it to do it, right? And so when you have full time frame continuity to the upside in this case, here's what they told them. Buy now by taking the offer. There's no other explanation for that. That's what they told them to do. So we know that, 
right? And we can look for reversals back up, right? So most people, when you hear the word reversal, think in terms of major reversals, right? Gi giant, like we just saw, collapse in the market. That's not true. Reversals happen all the time. And that's why trading can be difficult for people. They don't understand that. And they believe that there's these evil robots coming in and taking them off and then going back the other way, which would make no sense for an algorithm to do that. If you had a, a bid below something, like and like down in here, or something, like your stops here, and it takes you out and goes back up. There would be no need for it to do that. It wouldn't make any money doing that. So that's not what is occurring. Okay, now when we talk about a reversal, there's only so many ways that price can possibly reverse, no matter what anybody tells you. I'm not going to go into all of them right now, but if you just understand these very simple concepts, you'll be able to identify a reversal right away. So, one way that price can reverse is a two in one direction, just took out the high, followed by a two in the other. That's a two-two reversal right there. Two in one direction, an inside bar, one, two in the other direction. Two in one direction turns into a three. There's three major reversals right there. If you understand that, right? You'll know how to identify a reversal, okay? So, if we go to what happened. We open the new year, right? And so we come in here, and SPY goes into new highs, right? That's a two to the upside. However, once you come back into this range and go red, potentially a 2-2 reversal, which did not happen right away. What happened is we went into the highs, right? Now, if you go to the weekly, you're going to see this. You see that? That took out the highs. Two, two reversal coming back through here, right? So now that you're wiping out the opening of the year, the quarter, the month, all that kind of stuff here, right? So you're coming back through a previous range. That's something you want to happen. So when we have full time frame continuity to the downside, that means the sellers are hitting the bid right? By, by price and time, that's happening. You have a reversal on the weekly here, the two, two. So the reason you want to come back through a previous range, if we already know that the more aggressive participants are the sellers, when you come back through a previous range, you are potentially turning more seller, more longs into sellers. Why? Because people are positioned by where they got in or known pivots, stop orders, all the way through here, right? So if algorithms are told to hit the bid and stops are going off, that accelerates the aggregation to the downside, right? So here on the month, it goes up, but once it comes back into here, you're a potential three. That probability increases once it goes red. That changes, everybody who bought in here now it goes underwater here, and we know outside bars exist, right? So at this point, that was 32335 to give us the outside month. And our target was to take out this at least, 32036. Now if we go to the quarterly chart, the quarterly and the yearly are going to be the same opening because it's the first quarter. It opened at 323.58, sound familiar? So right in that neighborhood, boom, everything's aggregating to the downside by year, quarter, month, week, day, and 60, when all that's red. And once this goes red and starts coming back through here on the quarter, since we know outside bars exist, we're gonna take this up, at least. 284.82, if you go to the yearly, you'll see this. Boom. Once we started coming back through here, since we know outside bars exist, our target was then here. The 243.67, 243.67, right? So that's what happened there. If we go to the transports, because we want to use as many broader averages as we can, right? So here, last year was an inside year for the transportation index. So once it took that out, 
and then came back and turned red here at 196.17 and starts going back here because we know these outside bars exist. Our target's to take this out and go outside year, which we did. We call this a one bar reversal strategy. So here outside on the quarter as well, but we call this a one bar rev strat. And wh what that means is that any one, which was an inside year, is an equilibrium. Now it's closer to the highs, but it couldn't take out the previous highs or lows. Couldn't do it, right? So when you take out one side here, the equilibrium was, they attempted to take it to the upside and they're getting thwarted nastily. Right? This is what, that's what, why you want to know about this. Right? If you look at the small cap of Russell, same deal. Inside year gets back into that after a failed attempt and turns red here. Right? That was really a tell that these things started to go first. Once again, if you look at the Russell here on the monthly basis, here. Right? This was January, went up and closed on the lows. 2-2 two, two reversal into February. This thing was already tanking back through a previous range. So for this reason, one of the things you always want to ask yourself is what's the next two? What will that create, negate, or do? And what we mean by that is although this was technically a two up, because it took out one side, it was red and came back into the range, much closer to going two down, right? Boom, it does it, right? So much like on the yearly, it's an outside year. When, it, when I say you don't want to read a chart, you want to analyze data based in terms of what I'm telling you, that charts aren't going to present the time, always the time frame that you want. We just want to know that these concepts exist. So if you take a look at this, and you'll see this, these guys here, if this was a three-month chart, are an outside bar of all this stuff here. If you go to the SPY, these two months are a three of all this stuff. There's also so many ways price can continue, right? Two. <laughs> so here. Because we know that this was in a range expansion on both sides of the previous range, once this goes two here and takes the three two down, this is still happening. These guys are still getting screwed. This range is still expanding. They attempted to expand it one side, they expanded it to the other, and this continuation, it's still expanding. That's still happening, right? And then we call this a compound three because it's not an outside bar, but it would be on a two month chart. So, the other th guys that were having some problems, energy, right? So, whenever you see it inside bar, that's an equilibrium, right? Who's, somebody's got to take that side. Couldn't take out the highs, couldn't take out the lows. XLE on the year, inside year, these guys went first, too. And these below 55, 55, cremated. Do we know about that? We definitely did. Like I said, they make these macro videos. How about... Boeing. This is a 2 2 reversal on the year to the upside, and you can see it was a 2 up, <clears throat> but the next 2 is much closer to being down. And you take that out 30940. If you combine that with the quarterly inside quarter to start the year, boom, right there. Below 32061. There's two levels telling you this thing's get, getting destroyed. If you go to the airlines, and why would we know about the airlines? Because of the reversal in the transportation index on the yearly, right? This is an inside quarter continuation down in American Airlines, below 2451. If you go to the yearly of United Airlines, you're going to see this inside year, right? After a two up, two, one. See you later.
7702, puking all the way down, you also had this. Inside on the quarter, here, below 8087. What that means is from a macro basis for the entire quarter, as long as this thing's blood red, we can look for full time frame continuity to the downside, right? That means that the sellers are still hitting the bid. So when I say once a three, always a three can't not be. Remember, you want to train your mind to see time frames that aren't being presented by software. What I mean by that, coop, outside, outside, outside month. Remember, once you take out both sides, that doesn't mean it's resolved. It could do it again. Ask Coop. Then it went inside, inside. This is called a compound one, right? This is anytime you have an inside bar, the previous bar is called the mother bar. If you can't get out of that, anything that's in here, no matter whether it's a two or what's going on until you get out of here, when it closes out, becomes a compound one. So on a two month chart, this was an inside bar of that. And then it went into the highs. Uh huh. And then what happened? It went into the highs and failed, came back here. At this point, when it goes red, now the probability goes up that we're going to go take it out the other side because we know that phenomenon exists, which it did. Then, boom, the 3-2 continuation to become an outside bar of all of that. See that? So once these guys were telling you something, once you came back through there, right? Then... On the weekly, once a three, always a three can't not be. Can come roaring back. Takes all these guys out. These guys thought they were getting chewed up in here. Oh, that was just warming up for this baby. Right? <laughs> and so here, on the way back, right? If you're going to come back up through the three, you're going to do a two-two reversal on the weekly this week. Here, over one thirty-five, right? So. Let's go back to the SPY for a second. So there's something called control when you have time frame continuity. Because we knew on the month, you're not taking this baby green. Uh-uh. The good thing is that with the VIX this high, volatility at this high, we can shrink our time frames because we're seeing as much movement in a week as we normally see in a month or more, Right. Every 60-minute bar is a new day to us, but I'm not going to go into this. I just want to get the simple concept so everybody can understand what they're looking at and what's going on. So, if you go back to the SPY Weekly, what happened this week? The outside bar, right? Did we know about that? We did. How? Here. Monday down, 2-2 two, two reversal back through previous range. If you don't have a reversal against you, guess where it's going? Outside bar. Because we know that phenomenon exists. Then it's got to stay out because it's once a three, always a three, can't not be. To start the week off, now we're an inside day. What's the next two? What will that create negator do? We go back through the range again or we can try to expand it. Did we know about that? We did. The halftime show on Tuesday was actually called Reversal Day. Back to some fun threes. APA. Once a three, always a three can't not be. And also can look for compound. This was in every weekend video. This was in the course I was teaching all of a month. You see this outside bar here. There's your three. It goes attempting to go 3-2 to the upside, but closes closer to here. What's the next two? Two down, right here. And until, unless this gets negated, because this is an outside bar, you're going back through the here. And these three are outside of all this. And we know about that. And so if you're lucky, like in this environment, they really destroy it. As you can see here, this thing got destroyed. If you go to W, this was an outside bar here, higher high, lower low, two up, comes back in. What's the next two? Right there. And some real buttes off of that kind of stuff. 
because we've seen them on the upside too over the course of the last year, X AXSM. This is why you want to know about this stuff. Coming back to a previous range with a three. Outside, down, boom to the upside. Space, here, outside, two down, two two reversal, magnitude there. And if you're lucky, it keeps going. And right now, two two reversal back down. So once again, about control and continuity, all right? Although this is red on the month, whenever the weekly, the daily, and the 60 minute are green here, I can identify that the sellers are there. They, they may be gone. They're being overridden, or at least they're not as aggressive. They're staying on the offer and they're getting, they're getting their price, right? That's called control, right? So that's an important concept as well as understanding that once you understand continuity, Lagging indicators are way late compared to continuity. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So, we know that up here, we went into full time frame continuity to the downside, right? Below the opening of 323.35. We also had the yearly, the quarterly, and all that kind of stuff. That's where the aggregation series was, getting, was, was hitting the bid. The sellers were hitting the bid. Did this occur over the 200-day moving average? You bet it did. You're going to tell me that's bullish? No way. Continuity first. You might recall this. The two, in 2018, the 2-2 reversal, this was in October. This is an inside bar. This is the 2-2-1-2 two, two, two continuation. What happened at that point? Everybody thought it was the end of the world there too. Right here. New year, new quarter, new month. New week, green, full time frame continuity back to the upside. Was that below the 200 day? I believe it was. All right. So, and you can see it's clear as day of what we're looking at now. So, then if we go to look at the bond market, TLT, based on what we know on the quarter, came in the year as an inside quarter. Boom. TLT over 146.03. Boom, there's your continuation TLT. So what we want to look for, right, is things taking out the highs, two in the other direction. While the market's tanking, do we have things that are going up? I showed you CTXS. What's going on here? Let's go to the year. Inside year to the upside. Right? That means anybody who's short is getting steamrolled. The market's falling apart, and that stock is going up. Do you think those guys are jammed? Definitely. If you go to TDOC, inside year to the upside, stick it to them. This is how you get put in the right places. We want to trade with continuity, and what's the next two, and the two in our direction. Even Netflix... To a lesser extent, tried to take out the inside year to the upside. But for the quarter, it was inside quarter to the upside, over 338, trading 357.12. If you go to NVIDIA, this, on the yearly basis, Still inside up on the year for NVIDIA. Now, yes, it's coming back to the previous range, but this is going to help you put you in the right places. Because if you look, Tesla. Tesla's been an animal, but what we've known just by these basic concepts and using the macro charts on a quarterly basis, you're going to see this. Last year, inside quarter to the downside. Inside quarter, two, one, two reversal back through previous range above 266.07. Did we know that? We sure did. Because we know outside bars exist. If you go to a longer time frame, you're going to see this. Here's the yearly. Inside, attempt, failure, change in continuity on last year, 306.50. Target, take this baby out. 387.50. 46. Did it do it? It did. Then it went 3-2. Ex still expanding for this naughtiness. 
Then on a weekly basis, Tesler. Two, two. Here was your three. Here. Range expansion on both sides. Stop them out. Still expanding. Three, two, 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 two. Now, once you went inside here and went up in here, you couldn't take that out. Compound one. And so anytime you're trading an inside bar, now on a longer time frame, like with a big range like this, you can do it. The shorter the time frame, the more you're going to get killed, right? And you can expect reversals, all right? So once again, this is a rev strat. Anytime you reverse the inside bar, inside bar to the upside, followed by a 2-2 reversal. Where's it going? It's going to take that out right there. And there's your 2-1-2 two, two to the downside, which then gave you this on the monthly. 2-2 two, two reversal back down here below 6-11-52. Okay, so what does that leave us with now? For one, how are you going to get out of here and not be a one for, for April? Right now, are you closer to taking the downside? How are you going to get out of here? All right. You can go inside and then go back up. You could really get killed and go potential three. But that's what you want to ask yourself. What's the next two on this? All right? It's likely a one. But as you get closer to either side of this, would be, have to be the next two. Otherwise, you start going compound one in here. All right? So there's a whole lot of ball game to be played. But that's what you want to ask yourself. What's the next two? And you got a three. How are you going to get out of here and are you going to stay out? All right? That's, that's something we want to know about. So, on, based on what I showed you, what you want to look for should we start to recover, not only is that continuity, now because you're going to have a new quarter, new month, or you're not going to change the, the yearly real quick, but you're going to have a new quarter, you're going to have a new month, new day, and new week. So that's how we're going to determine the price direction. Which way is it aggregating? Are they taking the offer, hitting the bid? So then... Like I showed you, the CTXX and TDOC, what we want to look for on the monthly basis are stocks that, that could take out, that are closer to taking out the highs. AMD. Crowd, for instance. ANET. So these are the candidates, stuff like that, are candidates we would want to look for going to the upside. You always want to put your mindset in the, the other guy's shoes, right? Most people get caught up in their own heads of their own thing. Always get caught up in the mindset. Now, let's say that I was short A&ET. The market falls apart. Everybody who's short at this month goes underwater as soon as that gets taken out, right? There's always so the perception whenever you're going to have a new bar come up that people are going to see something new, right? They are. So somebody might say something looks good. Here, just going to the highs. I'm going to buy it at a pullback. Boom, 2-2, two, two, where's your pullback? Destroyed, right? Coming back through previous range. And you're going to see this in everything, right? So people ask me about how to draw the triangles, right? All I want to do is identify outside bars that aren't being presented by the software. And what I mean by that is I go back here to create the outside bar. This to here is an outside bar of all this, right? So it's not a game of geometry where I'm just going off random pivots. I'm going off where I can create the outside bar because we know that exists. And then as things go, you look for reversals back through the previous range. So here, two up, boom. Then you had corrective activity. This was a two, potential three. Two, potential compound three. And then what happened? Two, two, reversal back down here, which created what? These two are an outside bar of that, right? It's another example, TRHC, right? So, two up, two down, two down. Two, potential three. Two, two, reversal to give you the compound three of all this. Two up. From here to here is an outside bar of all this. Two, two, reversal back down. Two, 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 potential three. Two, two, reversal giving you the compound three. This to here is an outside bar of all this. Then, two, two, reversal back down. These are an outside bar of all this. 
This is how price discovery works, right? And if you don't understand that and you're trying to use horizontal lines of support and resistance and you're getting killed because it keeps taking you out a little bit lower, a little bit lower, that's why. This is how it works. So with this heightened volatility, we're going to watch the VIX. How is this going to unwind, right? The VIX is going to unwind someday, right? We don't know how that's going to look. So we're constantly keeping an eye on the VIX. That's telling us that it's this high, that they're still paying up for protection, all right? And for newer folks, what that means is in the options market, the VIX tells us how much people are willing to pay to have option protection to protect their positions. Right now, they're paying up. So the question is, when we have a new quarter, now that we've had a snapback rally, does that mean that fund managers are still in there buying protection just so that it doesn't look like a total disaster when they have to do their splaining at the end of the quarter. So we want to watch that for sure. You also want to be careful of heavily leveraged products right now. Things are breaking down badly, as you can see, like the crude oil UWT, 807 into oblivion, 18 cents. You can see, I'm sorry, gold, GLD. What did GLD do this quarter? I'll tell you what it did. Inside quarter to the upside, two one two. So the problem, the problem was people get used to these leveraged products, trying to follow the commodity. And you look at JNUG. This is the gold bull. <laughs> Wiped out three two down on the month, below forty two fifty. The weekly here, inside bar. Boom, all right? And I'm not going to go into too much more uh, watching the outside, inside, and down. There's more to this, obviously, but I want to make it as easy for everybody to understand. Direction is based on continuity. The aggregation series. Are they hitting the bid? Are they taking the offer? Right? It's very simple. There's only so many way price can reverse. If you see that you are about to get caught into a potential three, that's when you're really going to get killed or make a lot of money, right? So very simple concepts. One, two, three. What's the next two? What will that create negate or do? Once a three, always a three can't not be. And train your mind to see things that aren't being presented to you. Like this to here is an outside bar of all this. Hopefully that helps. I'm Rob Smith in the Black Quantity VTF here at T3 Live, the special edition of the first quarter 2020.